Hi, Joel. Hello. So we have uh, what's new in Playwright uh, V115. 115. Yes, exciting. Yes. Uh, so I have a presentation as usual. Let me uh, bring it up. Here it is. And uh, yes, a usual reminder, uh, this is not a getting started with Playwright. If you don't know what Playwright is, uh, head over to our uh, documentation website on playwright.dev. Uh, get used to what it is and come back. This is what's new in the latest release. We are also present on the social channels. So uh, if you like what we do, subscribe uh, to our YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and give us a star on GitHub. We will surely ap appreciate it. OK. So tip of the day. We noticed that a lot of people have both Playwright and Playwright test installed. Don't do this. Just have uh, either one or the other. And uh, preferably well, just, the just Playwright, Playwright test. test, right? Yes, just Playwright test, usually. So uninstall Playwright and install Playwright test. OK, this is our short agenda. And uh, let's start right, right away. So first up is full parallel mode. Uh, Joel, do you have an idea what it is about? Um, not really, because I thought that my tests already ran in parallel. Yes, well, uh, they are. That's why it's called full parallel mode. Okay. So currently, here are three, three rules on how we run tests. First, if you have two different files, uh, these tests from these files will actually run in parallel. Crystal clear, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Next, if you have two different projects, then tests from these projects will also run in parallel. So two different projects means like um, I have like Chromium tests and Firefox tests. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. And next, and this is the only way to run when we actually run tests in sequ mm -hmm. sequence, is when you have uh, tests from the same uh, spec file. Oh, OK. So, so for example, if you have two tests in the same spec file, they will run sequentially. Yes, yeah, so when I have two its that are ones on top of the other, today they always run in order. Yes, yes. And, then, and this is yeah. to, to enhance predictability, right? This is a good oh, okay. thing. OK. I think I know what's described a parallel okay. is, but do you have another slide that's going to explain it? Yes, yes. OK. So, so first of all, I, I will reiterate. So this is yeah. our uh, test spec file. We yeah. have five tests here. Uh, in the bottom right corner, I ran this uh, test with workers equals two. So I have yeah. two workers. Still, I have only one worker that's doing its job, right? And it's going yeah. over these yeah. uh, tests, it, and it's yeah. It doesn't matter how many workers you give playwright; you're only going to get one worker for this file. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now I change describe to describe dot parallel, hmm. and if I run with two workers, then this file will basically fork into two files, and workers will pick different tests from this mm -hmm. suite. And now, like as my tests run, like each worker will do its part, and uh, they will run twice as fast. Oh, so it's a, okay. So th this is like I remember for our own test suite, we were splitting test files into multiple files. Um, like we have like click test one and click test two, and I think click test three, because we had too many click tests and it was being too slow. So yeah. now we yeah. won't have to do that. Yes, you don't have to do that. Just uh, describe you, parallel everything. Are we suite. using that in our test suite now, or should I go do a pull request? Uh, you should go, I think. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. So th this, just to clarify for people, it sounds like this will make it faster, Like especially if you're running just one file, like just to test one test suite. Um, but it might, I'm assuming it might be a little bit more inefficient uh, if you have like a 1,000 test files, because it's it sounds like it's going to run like your before alls more than once for each worker. Oh, yes, yes. If you have hooks in this test file, that each worker will run your hooks, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, so use with this with, with, with good thought. Yes. Yeah. OK, moving on. So, this was a good feature uh, API testing. So, Joel, do you have an idea what this is? Uh, let's say no. Let's say I have no okay. idea what this yes. slide means. OK. OK, so I have a short story. Okay. So say, for example, you have this internal URL in your intranet. And okay. uh, it does okay. this, is, this is REST API testing. Y yes, 
yes, yes. yes. And you can hit this API, and this mm -hmm. will launch some microservice, in, in you know, in, in you know what, and it will launch yeah. some database, whatever wrapper. Yes, I actually have a URL like this that starts my uh, MongoDB server. Okay, so how would you do this today? Um, I use a node fetch. Exactly. <laughs> now a more complicated question. Okay. Now say, for example, I have this kind of URL. Oh. And I can go to it, and uh -huh. it will return me a cookie, and this will okay. be a login cookie. Um, I would uh, navigate to it in a new... Co I, I would have trouble, is the answer. Yes, yes. I think Usually I could you... do it, but I would have to go to the thing either with node fetch or playwright and then get the cookies back. And then presumably I want to inject these cookies into my browser context in playwright for my test. Yes, so it does require programming, but now yeah. we have some experimental API. It, it is experimental mm -hmm. that lets you do this. Okay, so so real quick, I'll show you how to use this experimental API. Mm -hmm. uh, I have this test, and in this test, I have this page underscore request dot get. Mm -hmm. And this does a request on behalf of the page using its cookies. Can, can I interrupt you here? Yes. So you, you were asking before how I would do this before this API. And I remembered how I would do this. I would navigate to the page, right? And then I mm -hmm. would, inside the page, do a fetch. And then I would make sure yes. that all the course headers were correct. Yes, but uh, this, well, if, if you have course restrictions, yeah, this is not going to work. Uh, okay. This does course bypass for you. So okay. it works. OK, so this is like doing fetch inside the page, inside the JavaScript in the page, like window.fetch. Yes. Does it wait? So does it bypass cores or not? It it does bypass cores. Okay, yes. so it's more powerful than the fetch. It's more powerful. Yes, 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 yes. And you get the response on the Node.js side, so you don't have to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 was, that was always cores. fun. <laughs> yes, and this response is actually it's called fetch response. It it mm -hmm. has this type, and uh, you have all the fields like URL, status, status text, you know, yeah. headers, everything you would expect from a response. Mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty good. Okay, now. Yes, and it does have cookies as well. Mm -hmm. The cool part. So many folks actually asked us, uh, what about response interception? So response interception, like what do we do currently? Currently, we can catch and intercept all the requests that are flowing from the page. You're talking about a page.route, right? Yes, page.route. OK, exactly. so people can think Google Playwright, or they can being a Playwright uh, page.route, right? Yes, so yes, yes. what we're yes. talking about. Yes. Now I want actually not to to catch a request, but I want to catch a response. Mm -hmm. uh, do something with it and continue it to the browser. Mm -hmm. So with this API, it is actually possible. So I'll show you how. So here is a simple two-liner. I just navigate to a page, and this is my my website. There is my face. Uh, okay. Here it is. And What's now good? I will do. Oh, this good catch. Uh, this <laughs> is a node library to to change uh, images. Okay. So you can do like image modifications with it. So what I want to do, I want to catch all the responses, all the images, and I want to blur all the images on the website. Okay. So I'll show you how. So I'll I'll pad everything down and I'll start uh, page dot route. I'll do request interception, hmm. and I'll catch all the JPEGs, right? All the images. For each of them, I will actually do page request fetch, and I'll fetch this image from the server. And uh, notice, I use uh, route dot request here. So oh, this is actually wait. oh, you can just you can you can just pipe one to the other. Yep, I piped one into the other. Oh, yeah. so now in my response, I have the response for the image. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Now I can do like this uh, magic. I can get the body. I can mm -hmm. parse it. I can blur it, and mm -hmm. I can continue back to the browser with this response and all the headers. You know. And I can do a custom body. And this is the body that, that I blurred. OK. And so as a we... result, yeah, I actually get a, a blurry image. Wait, so we fulfilled with the response and an override the, the body of the response with this yep. body. Oh, yeah, and it's exactly. blurry. Yes, it is blurry. Yes. Yes, only the, the JPEG point. stuff. You didn't blur all the PNGs. Uh, these are icons, I think. Oh, this is these, icons. these are SVGs, oh, SVGs on your side. SVGs, right? yes, yes, yes. These are SVGs, exactly. OK, uh, so this was a uh, context fetch. It is experimental, but mm -hmm. give it a try. Yeah. Uh, yes, it follows redirects and, of course, it bypasses oh. course. 
Now we have a bunch of CLI goodies in this release. Um, we have two of them. We have new dash dash debug, and we have a new npm init playwright. And I'll actually show you both uh, with a small demo. So I stop screen share and I share my uh, terminal. Actually, the whole window. Uh, can you see my terminal? Yeah. Can you hit hide on the screen sharing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it does something. Oh, no, no. Okay, you're, I'll... you're good. I'm good? Okay, awesome. So I'll create this demo folder. I'll CD into it. And I'll do npm init playwright. Playwright. So what this, it does, it, yep. This is like a create React app kind of thing. Yes, it's kind of create React app or Yeoman. It's a yeah. scaffolding, basically. It yeah. lets me pick a language. Mm -hmm. No, that's the JavaScript. Uh, folder for my end-to-end -end tests. It mm -hmm. lets me set up a GitHub workflow. And basically, it sets up a playwright test in this folder. And if this is a new project, it will, you know, add git ignore and everything. Yeah. If this is an existing project, it will add itself into the project. Yeah, I happen to know you you can run this like even if you already have your npm project set up, if you have your jest tests or whatever, you can still run this. It won't break anything. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Now it, it tells me what it created. It it's created uh, player config. Let's let's quickly look into it. So. This is a pre-populated config for Playwright test. It has a lot of things here. Mm -hmm. uh, you pick what you need. If mm -hmm. you want to set up a web server to launch something, you just uncomment things here. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a bunch of projects. And we have like desktop Chrome and Firefox and Safari and mobile Chrome and mobile Safari. So all of these, these are, you know, the configurations that you will use to run your tests. Yeah. The sake you of my next demo. Yeah, yeah. I just want to de delete this to have less tests. Yeah. Uh, and I want to show the npx playwright debug flag. And this will actually launch uh, Chrome and the playwright inspector. So this it has two windows here. This yeah. first one is the window with the browser. And this it window actually, is where we... Test. Yes, this, this, that's where my test will run. It looks blank. Uh, yes, and this one on the like on the background. I'll, I'll do uh oh, that. that's that's, this that's is, also your test. <laughs> yes, this is actually my test, and this is called Playwright Inspector, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's really cool. It mm -hmm. has like these four sections. Uh, it shows me my code with an execution line, and uh, up here I have buttons to control this execution line, and I can step over things. And as it steps over, uh, I see my execution line actually yeah. moved. There is a log, and it tells me like what it did, and mm -hmm. like it navigated successfully, and what it's doing, and it's currently about to yeah, click. It's, it's about to click, right? It's hovering. It's over. It's about the, to it, click. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And on the left hand side, I can see this red bot dot, yeah. right? This is where it will click, so I can actually yeah. validate it. Yeah. And here in this section, this is a playwright selector playground. I mm -hmm. can actually, you know, change this and. Uh, play, I can put any playwright selector here, and uh, it will highlight the thing for me. Cool. And I can even click this Explore button. Like, and once I click it, my Chrome video pops up. And as I hover over elements here, uh, you know, this black selector shows me what's, like, uh, what about... Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to black on black, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, okay, like I see it. Yeah. I, I think I can... So, so those, those are the... The like what playwright thinks the best selector is for that element. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, How so about now? Good. Is it better? Yeah, so it wants to select by text in most places. But if we had like yes. IDs or test IDs, it would pick those up. Yep. Exactly. And once I click, it puts the selector inside the playwright selector playground. Oh. Okay. So this is the the inspector, and these mm -hmm. are CLI goodies of this release. Yeah. Uh, so we've had the inspector before, but now it's uh, easier to access with the dash dash debug. Yes, right? yes. You you used to have a PW debug environment variable. Yeah. Instead of this, um, this should be this should be a lot easier for people on Windows to set up. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So these were these two things, and now the last uh, chapter here. Uh, we have these bunch of new APIs, uh, new headers API. We had these request headers and response headers, mm -hmm. um, and they were accidentally lacking some exotic headers in Chrome. Mm -hmm. 
happens. Now we fixed this and we added a whole bunch of new and shiny APIs and uh, they are nice and convenient to use. So please use them in favor of uh, the old ones. Mm -hmm. Next is mouse wheel emulation. This is Joel's feature. Uh, oh. It lets you emulate the wheel. Yeah. Uh, so it, yeah. it's, it's really so, cool. You want me to explain? Uh, a few words. Before, yeah. yeah. So so it's just, you know, mouse wheel, like the middle, the scroll wheel. You can emulate that now with Playwright. Um, uh, we wait for the event to dispatch into the page, but we don't necessarily wait for all the scrolling to finish because that might take a while. Um, but usually you don't have to worry about that because you wait for your next selector. Uh, so, you know, have fun scrolling pages, zooming in maps, wheel events. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, next up is fourth color simulation. This is to emulate media, fourth colors media, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, next is checkbox sugar API, which is set checked with a flag, mm -hmm. because before we had uh, page dot check and page dot uncheck, and this is just mm -hmm. a more convenient approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, last but not least, I think is a uh, new sizes API. So mm -hmm. for each request, you can have these metrics: how much did the body weight, how much did the headers weight, like in kilobytes or in bytes, actually. And um, this is it. These are all the new things we have in uh, Playwright 115. Mm -hmm. Cool. So once again, yeah. Thanks so much, Joel, for joining yeah. me in this quick recap. Yeah. Um, and everybody have a nice day. Yeah.